Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, one of the most common questions that have been asked by many of my subscribers, many of my students who are learning data science from my YouTube channel, uh, saying that Krish, what are the key points to identify a very good data science project? Because at the end of the day, we really need to write a lot of projects in our resume. And we want to write a project in such a way that it really impresses the interviewer. Now, <clears throat> whenever we talk about data science projects or generative AI projects, it's not like we just use a couple of tools. We use a lot of things. We use frameworks, we use databases, we use multiple skills. Uh, and then we finally implement this specific project, right? So if I really want to start from scratch, right? let's say if I'm doing my first project, how should I go ahead with? And what are the key points that I really need to consider while making my data science project? That is what I'm going to discuss in this specific video. Please make sure that you watch this video till the end because <clears throat> at the end of the video, I will also give you around 10 to 15 amazing end-to-end -end projects, uh, videos along with videos, along with materials, and whatever key points that I'm considering over here, all those key points will be implemented on all those kind of projects that I'm going to discuss, okay? So let's go ahead and here is what I really want to share my screen with. A uh, simple diagram, but there is a lot of things that I really want to write in this specific diagram, okay? <clears throat> The first and the foremost important thing with respect to a data science project is with respect to the modular coding, right? This is the first thing. I think this is the basic necessity that is currently required. I have still, I see many people who are just focusing on Jupyter Notebook and all, but trust me, it's time. Now the world is really competitive. You really need to understand about modular coding. Uh, let's say that I, I use Python programming language, right? With the help of Python programming language, I will definitely use all the features like classes, data abstraction, encapsulation. And then I will try to solve the problem of code reusability, right? Code reusability. Obviously, <clears throat> this thing you don't need to write in your resume, but at least when you give the GitHub link, right? When they go, when the interviewers goes and sees your GitHub link, right? So over there, you'll be able to see that the entire project is structured in an amazing modular way, right? And this really impresses the interviewer. Now, when I say code reusability, that basically means your entire code is very much loosely coupled, decoupled, basically. And you can use all those modules anywhere that you specifically require, right? And this really gives the entire project a very good uh, look with respect to implementation, with respect to the kind of... Uh, things that you have you have actually developed, right? So modular coding is must right now. I still still see that people are much more dependent on Jupyter Notebook. Yes, use Jupyter Notebook, but use it only for a research purpose. Research basically means we basically, whenever I implement a project, I create a research folder. And inside that I create a Jupyter Notebook so that whatever initial things that I really want to do with the help of Jupyter Notebook inside this particular folder only, I'll save it, okay? So model coding is the must point and everybody should definitely use it, okay? Now coming to the second thing which many people also forget to miss or write in their uh, resumes is about databases and how they are specifically using these databases in their resume, right? In their project, sorry. <clears throat> now with respect to databases, I've seen multiple resumes where people write multiple databases, right? Let's say Cassandra, this, that, and Cassandra DB is there. Then they also write about MySQL. They, 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 they write about four to five different different databases. Let's say vector databases and all. See, it is good to write, okay? I'm, I'm not saying that it is not good to write, but definitely make sure that whenever you write about databases, you know, you write only about those databases, like let's say MySQL, I, I, I have a very good hands-on experience with MySQL. I have a very good hands-on with Cassandra DB. I have a very good hands-on experience with vector DB, right? So if I am considering, I will write this three databases because I know if the interviewer asks me any question with respect to this particular three databases, I will be able to answer them, right? So please only write those information specifically in your resume, which databases that you know. Now, when I say talk about this databases, in a data science project also, it is very much important that you try to implement the project with databases. If you are missing the databases, trust me, it will not be looking good, right? 
Now this databases can be used in multiple purposes in the form of data pipelines. We can also use data pipelines because at the end of the day, once we create a data pipeline and we try to save the data, we can either save it in a NoSQL database or a SQL database based on the kind of data that we are trying to uh, create, right? So in every project, my my request will be that always make sure that you use some of the databases so that while we explain the interviewer right regarding your entire project the regarding the flow right it will definitely impress them okay so databases is must trust me with respect to this and it is my request again i'm telling you because i've seen many 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 resumes of different different people when they write about their project they do they forget to write about databases even though they have used okay because at the end of the day, I still feel that in companies, in every companies, they are going to use the database itself. They, people will be writing queries. People will be retrieving data from the database itself. Okay. Now coming to the third one over here, you'll be able to see with respect to frameworks. Now, when I say frameworks, okay, there are multiple frameworks that I, we can specifically use, right? For machine learning project lifecycle, I can use another framework. Let's say one of the example, uh, uh, that I can or first I'll, I'll start with simple frameworks let's say that I'm going to use flask so I've written about this particular framework let's say in my application I've used Django so I'm going to write about this specific application right it is also good that you use some of the frameworks right and without any frameworks that if you're using if you're creating a project that will also not give a good impression see I want to create a project which looks very much good when I probably consider in a view of 360 degree, right? So if I am using some frameworks, let's say with respect to Flask or Django, I will definitely use this. Now, yeah, I'm not saying only this two particular frameworks are there. There are other frameworks that I can specifically use, right? One example is Streamlit, right? Many people use Streamlit. Another example that I can probably consider uh, uh, is Gradio, right? So it is up to you like definitely make sure that at least one framework that you are specifically using and this frameworks can be used for the front end or uh, applications how you can actually do it right for the back end let's say you want to probably you create apis and all for the api part you can also use different different frameworks based on your requirement that you have right <clears throat> the reason why i am telling you to include this because these are some of the key points right now i've just discussed about one i've discussed about two i've discussed about three right just imagine you're developing a project where you have all these three things, right? Does it not look good, right? Now let's consider about the next point, okay? So modular coding is one, databases is one, framework is one. Now coming to the next part that is called as MLOps, right? Now, since we are talking about data science projects, we, since we are talking about end-to-end -end data science projects, MLOps can play a very important role. When I talk about MLOps, uh, there are multiple things that we can specifically use, right? If I think of CI CD pipelines, if I think of GitHub Actions, right? GitHub Actions. If I think about another framework, which is called as MLflow, which will help you to manage the entire data science project, right? In an amazing way. Let's say that I want to make sure that I fix, I, I, I want to also make sure that I, I use data versioning control. So for there, I will be using a DVC tool, you know? Uh, I may also use some other tool like Bento ML, right? Again, Bento ML is also an open source, which will actually help you to evaluate entire machine learning models. So in short, all these MLOps tools will help you to do some or the other things. It is always good that you have all these kind of tools in your project. Why? Because again, this will give a very good impression for the interviewer. All these tools that we specifically see over here, Right. These are something very important nowadays in any industry that we use because this entirely creates an amazing framework to manage your entire data science application, data science project to manage the entire data science project. So I have just written some of the application over here, CI, CD pipeline, GitHub. It's not necessary only you use GitHub action. You can use circle CI, you can use GitLab. So I'll, I'll write it over here, GitLab. You can use circle CI. It is up to you, right? But the reason why I'm telling you to write this, because at the end of the day, whether, whether when the interviewer, when the when the te technical interviewer will probably, or recruiter will probably ask you questions with respect to this, if you know this flow, because the same thing they will also be using in the industry, right? In the industry, how we work, it is very much important to understand. See guys, any job that you really want to crack, right? You really need to understand what is basically used in the industries. And if you prepare yourself based on that, then it will be very much important for you.
right? Because through that specific way only you'll be able to crack any interviews. Okay. So this is very much important over here. Then coming to the next one is about open source tools. Any open source tools that you specifically want to use, right? Still in companies also today, uh, there are a lot of open source tools being used by the companies itself for commercial and research purpose. It is okay. Commercial and research purpose. So whenever you get an opportunity, you know that it may not be used in the companies in the future, but it is always good to use all this kind of open source tools because tomorrow, if you want to plan for anything as such, you will be able to quickly implement for the companies itself, right? Because at the end of the day, initially in every company, in every company, some of the projects also start with POC projects, proof of concept project. And there you really need to use all this kind of things, right? Let's consider in the terms of open source tools that I really want to use here also. ML flow, you'll be able to see it is also kind of open source tool, which will actually help you to manage the entire life cycle of a data science project. Okay. The final thing, uh, and uh, there are two more things that I really want to discuss is regarding cloud. Okay. So in my project, if I'm writing multiple points, and there is one point that I really also want to write with respect to the cloud, and the skill set that I really want to add, it is also very much good because this is what recruiter will look like. Uh, they definitely like this information. Okay. What kind of deployments that you have done with respect to any projects that you have developed, right? And you have used different, different services of AWS, how you made it scalable. So here are some of the factors like scalability, right? Scalability. And uh, if I probably consider this software development life cycle also in this, right? How you have managed multiple environments like QA, like you at right, like production and how with the help of this all ML ops and open source tools, you are able to manage your entire deployment mechanism with multiple clouds that all will be considered because that is the same thing that is used in the industries. Right. And trust me, when you're able to explain all these things, right, it really gives a wonderful impression. So these are some of the key points for a good data science project. As I said, according to me, right? Obviously I've also included software development cycle. This is definitely required. Okay. See guys, one thing that you really need to understand that in industries, when you go, when you start working in a project, it's not necessary that you really need to develop each and every modules, right? There are some of the models that will be assigned to you, you know, and then you'll be moved to other modules. Similar stories will be probably coming up as an architect. You may need to probably design this entire things and all, right? So at the end of the day, it is very much necessary that you know the entire life cycle of a data science project and what all things we can probably put it, plug in, you know, implement it and, uh, you know, implement an entire product itself. So these were the key points that I really want to discuss, uh, which will actually help you to identify a good data science project. So yes, this was it from my side. I hope you like this particular video. One final thing that I really want to give you is this data science project for beginners. I've already created amazing GitHub repository for you, the data science projects for resume, all the key points that I've actually discussed in that, in this entire scribble notebook, right? That I've actually written all based on all these key points. I've actually developed all these particular projects. Let it be with respect to computer vision, NLP, uh, natural language processing, whatever things you specifically want with respect to deployment, with respect to all AWS services that we have used, you can definitely go ahead and check it out. I will provide you the description for, the, for this particular video, right? In this particular video. So yes, this was it from my side. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you and all. Take care. Bye-bye.